Good day, Year 12 Physics and others. Um, this is a quick video I'm posting on diffraction gradients. So we've obviously talked a lot about diffraction, you know, as a concept in, in wave motion, but also in particular recently to do with light. We've looked at uh, the double slit experiment. We've looked at single slit diffraction as well. Um, so today we're going to look at diffraction gradients. D diffraction gradients, are essentially, it's essentially an extension of the, the double slit. Um, so instead of two slits, we have multiple, maybe 10,000, okay, but really, really close together. Uh, so I've just written a definition here. Uh, diffraction gradient is an optical device with a large number of closely separated slits. Uh, you'll notice the formula up here is, is very much the same formula we use in double slit diffraction for bright bands, okay? Um, so light passing through a diffraction gradient will be diffracted in the separation gap between the observed bright bands, the antinodes, uh, on the screen will be large. Okay, so, so what we notice with a diffraction gradient is because we have a, a high concentration of slits in a, you know, a very small amount of space, um, we find the separation gap between those slits is very, very small, and as a result, the separation between the, the bright bands and the diffraction gradient will be very, very large. Okay, so why does that work? Well, we can, we can see that in the formula. So. I've just written the formula here again, just the, the main components that we're going to focus on. So, um, so remember, n is the um, the integer value, the integer value for the bright band. Okay, so uh, that's starting at zero, if you like. We don't tend to use n equal to zero, but n equal to zero represents the central maximum or the the, the bright band in the middle. Um, when we measure. Um, to the, the next bright band, which we could say is n equal to 1, so we could be measuring up to this one or down to this one, uh, that distance is x, so that's x here. x is essentially the distance um, <clears throat> to the fringe or to the, to the bright band, wherever we're trying to go, okay? Uh, so n and, n and x sort of correspond to each other, okay? As n increases, x increases. Lambda is the wavelength of the incoming light. Um, for most of these sorts of experiments that we do here, we, we, we look at light, uh, visible light, um, which sort of has a range of sort of anywhere between sort of 450 nanometers up to about uh, 600 nanometers, okay? So um, the smaller wavelength stuff is, is like the blue light, the longer wavelength stuff is like the red light. So in the scheme of you know, electromagnetic radiation, this is a very small window of, of wavelengths, um, but the effects of, you know, the, the, the change in wavelength from blue to red is certainly noticeable in a, in a diffraction gradient. In fact, that's one of the, the main applications of a diffraction gradient is we can separate white light into its spectral colours um, and atomic physics, that's, that's a really important aspect where, you know, we want to be able to see uh, what what gases, um, so in astronomy for instance, if we're trying to work out the gases that are out in some nebula, um, we can identify the gases by uh, the, signature, um, the signature spectral lines that, that are coming, coming through and we, we can view them through a, a kind of spectra, spectroscope, which is a diffraction gradient. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so, so the wavelength, that's you know, the, the length of the, uh, the wave of the light coming in, um, N is the number of the, um, the bright band that we're looking at. X is the separation between the central max and the bright band. Uh, what is D? D is the separation between the slits. So if we've got two slits, that's pretty easy. It's just the distance between the two slits. If we have multiple slits, well, that's a different story, but we're just looking at the distance from one slit to the, to the adjacent slit, okay? L, of course, is the length from the slits to the screen. So here, if we have our grading here, we have our screen here where we're projecting uh, an image of the, of the interference of, of the light, then L is that distance. So coming back to what I was trying to say before, uh, if we find that D is really, really small, okay, then we find as a result X, so we can say this, as D is small, uh, X will increase, okay? So the smaller the gap between the slits, the bigger the distance between um, these bright bands. So, in fact, diffraction is is really enhanced by a by a very small gap between the slits. Good.
Okay, so that's the formula. There it is up here as well. Let's look at an example. Okay, so this is um, this is the example I've sort of started here. It's straight out of the textbook. Uh, so you'll find it on uh, page 332 of the textbook. And you'll see there's a there's a whole section here on, just a short section on diffraction gratings. There's a worked example. Um, and you can see the formula is, you know, it's essentially the same as the one we use for double slit diffraction and it's bright bands. Okay, it's the exact same formula. Okay, um, so we'll look at question eight just here now. So let's look at it. So we've got yellow light. Let me try and get this over here. Okay, hopefully we can see both these things at the same time. All right, there we go. So there we go. Um, so we've got yellow light of wavelength 590 nanometers. So I've written that down here, yellow light, 590 nanometers. By the way, it's always good to convert that into meters. Every, all the distances in here that we're going to use in the formula, uh, we should really put them into meters. If we do that straight away, this one we, becomes 5.9 by 10 to the negative 7 meters. Um, of course, nano means by 10 to the negative 9. We've got 590 nanometers, which you know, becomes 5.9 by 10 to the negative 7 meters. Good. So there's our incoming light. There's our wavelength. Um, so this yellow light is shown on a diffraction grating that contains 10,000 lines per centimeter. Right. What does that mean? 10,000 lines per centimeter. Well, let's have a look here. If we have 10,000 lines a centimeter, the reciprocal of that would be to say we have one centimeter for every 10,000 lines. Now, if we convert that ratio into something in terms of one line, right? So we're really w looking at what's one divided by 10,000. And I think we'll find that will be something like one by 10 to the negative six um, meters. Okay, so we're talking one, one millionth of a meter. Okay, uh, and that's the gap between um, between two, two lines, okay? So if we're getting one centimetre for every 10,000 lines, right, we're getting this many metres for one line. So that will be our D. And as you can see, that's a really small number, uh, which is consistent with what I mentioned earlier, that um, for these diffraction gradients, we tend to find that D is really, really small, which results in X becoming really really large okay all right so we've got D we've got lambda let's have a look at the question again back to the question here um, we have a pattern on a screen which is 2.2 meters from the grating okay so L L then is 2.2 meters okay um, first question what is the distance from the central max to the second order bright fringe that's pretty familiar language. We've seen that in some of the other questions, okay? So in other words, we need to find X. We need to find X, right? Um, if we're measuring to a bright band, where N is equal to two, okay? And you can see we're really after this distance here. If that's your central max, right? This one here, if this is a second bright band, because that's the first one, we need that distance X. Okay, so let's just apply this formula here, shall we? So we've got n equal to 2, so we'll put that in. We've got a wavelength of 5.9 by 10 to the negative 7. That's in metres, and make sure everything's in metres, right? Uh, we've got a distance of separation between the two slits for, you know, a, a diffraction gradient here at 1 by 10 to the negative 6. We've got x is the thing we're trying to find and we've got l is equal to 2.2 so we just work this out on the calculator um, let's just do a bit of cross multiplying first so um, so 2 by 5.9 by 10 to the negative 7 times by 2.2 so we're we're shifting that 2.2 up and across um, divided by 1 by 10 to the negative 6 that will give us our x and we find quick computation on a calculator, we should get 2.6 metres. Okay, now you can see that's a, a significant distance um, 
compared to what we had with double slit diffraction where the separation between the slits was something more like more of the order of maybe 0.1 of a millimeter so if that was D um, depending on what L is we, we were seeing uh, X to say the, the first bright band or the second bright band in the order of you know maybe a couple of centimeters so that was that was for double slit diffraction um, whereas here we have because D is so so small we find that X is significantly larger okay um, so I might stop there that was just part A part A uh, where we had to find X we had to find X for n equal to 2 right um, part B is really not much difference different uh, the only difference really is uh, we're looking at the third order bright fringe so we're saying n equal to 3 um, and that's really the only thing that's different when we apply the formula so I'll leave that at that um, basically um, to summarize chapter 15 chapter 15 we looked at the electromagnetic spectrum the EM spectrum and we've looked at diffraction in terms of double slit single slit and now we've looked at the gratings as well um, there's some other in interesting kind of ideas that that's sit in chapter 15 things like polarization of light um, even looking at um, diffraction in things like films and soap bu bubbles and, and CDs as well. Uh, we'll just leave it at that though for now. Thank you.